now we can start bringing all these different components together. And the first thing I want to work on is a game over for when the player dies. I'll begin by setting up a new scene, and this will be another canvas layer scene, similar to our heads up display. And then I just rename the node to game over and switch over to the 2D view to start building it up. The main part of this is going to be a panel. So I will add that on. Then I'm going to have a label just to say game over. So I'll rename that to be game over label. Then the third node is going to be another label that will show how many waves the player has survived. So this is going to be my waves survived label. And lastly, I need a button to be able to restart the game again. So we'll just add a restart button here. Now let's start customizing these. So the first one is going to be the panel. We'll go into layout and transform to change its size. We'll go with 400 wide, 200 tall, and then 184 and 308, just to position it in the middle of our game window. I type these values manually, but we can actually just put this back to where it was and select the center preset here, and that puts them in the same place. And then we'll go in and customize the theme. So we'll go into theme overrides, styles, and then create a new style box flat. Click on it again, and this will allow you to change the color. So I'm going to go with kind of a, let's see, a purple-ish color. So maybe somewhere over here, down a bit, something like that. So that's going to be my panel. And then I will add a border width. So I'll give it a border all around of two pixels. And you can also add a corner radius. So I'll go with five all around just to round off its corners a little bit. By default, the border color is white. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And I think that looks fine. Now we do our game over label. This is going to say just game over with an exclamation mark. And the text right now, is, we can't see it because it's appearing all the way over there. We'll set the horizontal and vertical alignment to center and then increase the font size inside of theme overrides font sizes. We'll go with 30 for that. And now for positioning, we'll go layout and transform and I can use the anchor preset again. So we'll go center, but I think it might put it right in the middle of our panel. We don't really want that. So I'll offset it slightly. So I'll change the Y coordinate to 320 just to shift it up to the top of the panel. Then the second label is waves survived. So we'll put in some text in here and it's going to say waves survived is zero. So we'll just put a placeholder of zero. And then in the actual game, we're going to update this text to the number of waves that the player has survived. We set these alignments to center again, and we'll go into theme overrides and set the font size to 30. And now I'll position it in the same way. So let's go with uh, where is it? Transform. We'll set it to centered, but it'll again, it'll come up right in the middle. And that might be okay, actually, because I need space for a button underneath. So let's just leave that as it is. Then we can do the button. So we go over to the button. The text is going to say play again. And our button should be over here. So before I position it, I'm going to set its size. We'll go into layout and transform. Width of 250, height of 45. And then let's go and change the font size as well. So that's another 30. And now I can position it with this center anchor. So that will put it right on top of my waves survived. So I need to move it down a little bit. We'll change the Y coordinate to 450. And there, all three of them are now arranged the way I want them. But the button uh, needs to be customized a little bit more. So we need to change its style. We'll go in here and now we've got more options than we did with the panel. We've got normal, hovered, pressed, disabled, and focus. You don't have to do all of these, so I'm just going to do the first three. So we'll create a style box flat and then pick a color. So let's just go with green-ish. So that's what the button is normally going to look like, but then you can add a second one for when you're hovering the mouse over the button. So I'm just going to make it a little bit, maybe darker green. And then the last one I want to add is when it's being clicked on. So this is the pressed uh, style. And for that, maybe just a little more blue. Okay, something like that. And that's all we need. There's no script attached to this. So we can save this inside of our scenes folder as game over. We'll go ahead and close that one down and then go back into our main scene and we can instantiate that scene in here. 
we'll select game over from the list and it appears right in the bottom and we can see it straight away on our screen and if I run the game it comes up already so that's not ideal because we only want this to appear when we've got an actual game over scenario and we will do that in two ways so first of all we will go into our script for our main node and inside of our ready function this is where we're getting the game set up so we're setting all of our variables and updating the labels well at the same time we can go into our game over node just drag it over here and then set it to hide now that scene is completely hidden so we can't see it but it can still be processed because it is still active and running so if we click on this game over scene again and go into this process attribute here we talked about this in the previous section where we can change how it behaves depending on whether the game is paused or not we only want the game over scene to appear when this game is paused because that's when the, uh, the game is finished so the players died and we pause the game and we bring up this scene so we just select this when paused option now we need a way of showing this scene when the player dies so we'll go into this section of code at the bottom which detects when one of the goblins has hit the player now this just subtracts one from the player's lives so it doesn't automatically give us a game over right away but what if lives drops to zero so if we have less than or equal to zero lives well that means that the player is fully dead and the game is now over now we want to take our game over and we want to show it but remember this game over scene is only active when the game is paused so we actually need to pause the game as well to do that we just say get underscore tree access the paused property and set it to true and we can test this out quite quickly if i just change the number of lives to one and then wait until one of the enemies hits the player so now everything frees up the game is completely frozen because it's paused but this still works i'm still able to interact with my game over screen and i should be able to click the button right now nothing happens when i click it because we haven't connected any functionality to it but we have interaction with it the other thing here is it says wave survived zero now that is true because i died on the first wave but because we manually entered this text when creating the scene this is never actually going to change so we need to change that whenever we have this game over scenario here so before we even show our game over screen let's bring over our game over node again and then say forward slash waves survived label access the text property and then update it to say waves survived is a space and then we add the string value of the wave variable because that tracks the wave that we're currently on however we haven't survived the current wave we've just died on this wave which means that we actually need to subtract one from the current wave to show how many we've survived to get here now we need to connect this game over button to be able to reset the game so we've got this button existing as soon as the player dies and we lose the last life this comes up we have our button but nothing happens when we click it so normally we would just go into that scene go into our signals and just bring the signal up connect it up into the script but we're not going to do that here instead i'm going to connect to it manually through the code so inside of our ready function while we're getting everything set up i'm going to access the game over node again then say forward slash button go into its pressed signal and connect into it and when i connect something i need to pass in a function in the brackets here that's going to be triggered whenever that button is clicked so i need to create a function within the script that will then be triggered and that's going to be a new game function which i don't actually have yet so right underneath my ready function i'll create a new one which will be called new game and what happens when i have a new game is that all of my variables and my game basically just resets back to its starting condition so actually everything that happens here inside of my ready function should happen every time i start a new game as well so what i can do is copy this from here put it into my new game function instead but now inside of the ready function i will just call my new game function so it basically just keeps the code exactly as it was in terms of the logic but now this section here is reusable because i call the new game function every time i click that restart button so let's just check this and see if it actually works 
everything starts off correctly. One life, wave one and 10 enemies. And then once I get killed, if I restart, my lives have gone down to zero. But when I restart, I go back to one. The game hasn't fully reset itself because we haven't coded that in, but our variables are going back to how they were at the beginning. So the restart is partially working. To complete this reset so that it works correctly, all we need to do is make sure that we get rid of all of the items that were there before. So we've generated these goblins and over time we'll generate bullets and items as well. When we restart, we just want to get rid of everything and just start with a blank slate. Well, when we create these things like the goblins and the items that they drop, we actually add all of them into their own groups. So resetting them is just a case of emptying those groups out. And we can do that inside of our new game function. Once we've set these variables back to how they were, we'll say get underscore tree and then call underscore group. And here we need two arguments. The first is the group that we're interested in. So let's begin with the enemies group. And the second one is the function that we want to apply to this group, which is Q3. So we want to delete every single one of the enemies inside of this group. And now we can just repeat this for our bullets. And we can do the same thing again for the items. So if I run this again, and let's see if I can get some items generated as well. So there's a coffee mug over there, a little bit far away on the edge. But what should happen is that when we do get the game over from this last guy, and I click play again, everything clears. So all of the enemies just disappeared. The coffee mug has gone as well. The player is still offset. So the player hasn't restarted where it should be. And also the game is still paused. I can't move the player either. So first let's deal with a pausing issue. And that one is not too difficult. We pause the game when we get this game over scenario, when our lives have dropped to zero. So if I just copy this section of code here, when we have our new game, I can just unpause it. So I can set that variable to false. To reset the player, we go into the player scene and we have a look at how it's structured. So we have our ready function, which is where all of our variables are initially defined, including the starting position, which is just based on the half of our screen size. So we can do the same thing here as we just did in our main scene. We can create another function, which will be reset. And then I'll just move these variables into that function instead. I'll leave the screen size because I only need to get that once right at the beginning of the game. I don't need to keep measuring that, but the rest of these variables can come out of here and go into our reset function instead. Then to make sure that it's actually triggered to start with, we put it inside of our ready function. So when we first create the player, it will run this reset function and it will set all the variables but then each time we want to restart the game, we can just call this reset function from our main script. So if we go back into our main scene here and we'll do it right at the top. So just after we've set all of our variables up, we will drag over our player and then call the reset function. So now let's try this out. I'll run around, maybe kill a couple of enemies just to leave some corpses and then get killed by this one. So now when I restart, everything goes back to how it was. I can move about, the game starts again, and all of these variables were also resetting back to where they were. There is a little thing that I want to add in here though, which is that the game begins right away. And even when the player gets killed and we restart, everything starts going instantly. I would like to add a small delay there. And to do that, I will add a new timer. So we'll add an extra node here, which will be a timer node. And then we will change the name to be restart timer. I'm going to drag it above my two canvas layers. This part isn't too important. It's just the way I like to structure it. And then our restart timer will leave the wait time as one second, but we make it a one shot timer. The other important thing to set here is its process mode, which is going to be when paused, because what we're actually going to do is pause the game, start this timer, and then after the timer runs out, then we restart the game or rather we unpause the game so we can begin properly. So this timer has to run when the game is paused. Now inside of our new game function, just right at the end of it here, we're currently just setting the game paused variable to false. Instead, we're going to set it to true. So we'll say that as soon as we've started a new game or we have restarted our game, we actually want to pause the game right there. 
but then we drag over our restart timer and then we start it. Now we can go into our restart timer's timeout signal, link it in here, and then we unpause the game when this restart timer expires. So we can say get tree dot paused, and this is now where we set it to false. Now if I test this out right at the start, I can't actually move. I have to wait one second, then I can start moving. And then if I die, play again, I still can't move. So there's this one second just at the beginning to kind of break the game up a little bit and give you a little bit of time to get ready. And the next thing to do is start working on detecting when all of the enemies have been killed so that we can move over to the next wave and make the game more challenging and progressive. I'm going to work on that in the next video. So for now, we'll call it there. And if you found this useful, then please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.